YouTube gang? What's up? What's up, YouTube gang? What's up, YouTube gang? What's up? What's up, YouTube gang? What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Miss Sydney P. Her name is Sid. So today, I'm going to talk about my truth with spiritual baths, rituals, candles, all that good stuff, right? I'm just sharing my experience with you. I don't have anything against people who choose to do that. Um, you know, if that's something that you decide that works for you, then so be it. But I'm just here to share my story and my experience with that. So first, I want to start with how I started. How did I get into the candles and the saging and all of that? Well, I started a spiritual journey, okay? And I started to get more in tune with my energy, with who I am as a woman, and my capabilities of how I can manifest things in my life, how I could change my life. Guys, I struggle with a lot of depression. I have anxiety um, disorders. I have a lot of characteristics that contribute to me having mental health and um, issues and always feeling down and always feeling like I just don't feel good today, right? So um, one of my mentors introduced me to meditation. And once I started to meditate and I noticed that it actually was making a difference in my life, that's when I started getting open to more and more things. Um, since I was a child, I have known about myself that I am very intuitive. I have a special gift when it comes to intuition. I have the ability to tell when things are going to happen. I don't tell everybody this, um, and I'm not going to tell you everything, but just know that I have some special gifts about me, okay? So I really was trying to get an understanding of what was going on with me what was it and how could i learn how to tap into it so that i could control it and it wasn't controlling me in my journey i came across uh crystals i came across singing bowls i came across candles um which hold different types of energies i came across florida water which is used as like a protectant against bad energy. And I also came across sage as well. Now, saging and rituals are found actually in the Bible as well. Okay, so I'm not here to say that there is anything necessarily wrong with that. I'm just saying that it is in the Bible if you believe in God. Um, and you trying to have like a critic mindset here. Um, it is something that is in our word. The only thing is that it's practiced in the Old Testament. So it's an old way of doing things. Um, and this especially is for my woke brothers and sisters. Um, witchcraft and uh, is really what it is, is something that is a part of the African history line. Um, Jamaican history line is very heavy. I'm part Jamaican on my mother's side. It is something that was practiced, but these are like way back in the ancient days before we were introduced to Christianity. And really, if you really know your history, all Christianity is, is um, something, I, I don't know the exact name for it and I don't wanna say it wrong, but all it is is what the Africans were doing and the Europeans or the white people just keeping it real came along and they turned it into what they wanted it to be and they changed the names of the people and they changed the story and they removed some things and they added some things and so now it is what it is and because of that a lot of us have abandoned our original um, you know faith because we are so bombarded with all of the distractions that have come with it that other people have placed into the religion so we end up going on a walk on our own we're like okay i'm just going to abandon 
you know, what I knew and I'm just going to create, recreate myself, right? Which I don't think that that is a bad thing at all. I think everybody should try to recreate themselves, reinvent themselves and find where they fit. What I started to notice was um, I also started reading tarot cards as well. And if for all of you who don't know what that is or oracle cards, it's pretty much a deck of cards. And um, you ask the cards, you know, a question and then you would pull the cards out. There's a special way you can lay them out and all of that. And the cards are telling you the answer to your question pretty much. Um as one of my spiritual mothers told me, that is very close to playing with a Ouija board, which Ouija boards are seen as demonic, um, and they are. And I say that because what you're doing, energy is real. Spirits are real. Yes, you can communicate with the spirit world. But what ends up happening, like, I don't know if you guys ever paid attention in a scary movie, like Insidious is a perfect example, right? There are evil spirits in the child. And then as soon as the child's getting ready to be killed by the mom, the evil spirit leaves the child, or it doesn't leave. It turns into like, it starts going like, mommy, you're going to kill me. I'm your daughter. You know, when the, when the child literally was just trying to chop the mom's head off, right? And now all of a sudden it switched sides and it's, and it's appearing to be like the sweet spirit, right? Well, the same thing can happen when you're dabbling or when you're messing with these type of entities. You might think that you're bringing on something good and you're really not. And we already attach or get attached by spiritual things through people, through stuff that we watch, stuff that we listen to. So it's not really wise for you to try to attach yourself to something more than what you're already attached to right so for example um i was you know lighting my candles i had my stuff out i pretty much had an altar i swear i wasn't a witch but i had a whole altar and i had a friend that passed away in january and it was very unexpected and i wasn't handling it very well and it took me a long time to get over his death um so i tried to like tap into him um when he died and for not even, you know, keeping in mind that I love him to death, but his spirit was a little, you know, messed up. He had some things about him that were kind of like, you know, disturbing. Um, So my best friend would tell me, she'd be like, girl, you know, you shouldn't try to do that. You should leave that stuff alone. You know, you're going to attach something that is not who you think it is. And I didn't listen. And, um... I went to sleep that night before I went to bed my son literally like woke up out of his sleep he's in his room he woke up out of his sleep and he started crying hysterically like he was crying like something was scaring him and normally when he fusses like that it, it, it don't even be that bad of a cry right it's just like a little cry and he'll get up and he'll come in my room but he was literally like hysterically crying and he would not get up out of his bed. And so I went into um, the hallway and I stood in his door and I was like, are you, I was like, baby, are you okay? And he was just like, mm. and then um, my best friend was like, see, like you're, you're attaching to something that you think is him, but it's not. And so I fell asleep that night um, without praying or anything like that i had ended up falling asleep and when i woke up i had a scratch on my arm i still have it and i'm gonna show you i don't know if you can see it but it's right here i am a straight google head i will google if i have a question about something if i want to find out about something i'm gonna ask and i googled that as far as what it meant if you were trying to communicate with spirit and you got scratched and it revealed to me that um what that means is that you have attached yourself to a demon-like force and it's pretty much like letting you know that it's there
I was like still acting like, you know, that wasn't nothing. I start having these really bad dreams. And I also like reconnected with some people that I hadn't connected with in a while. And I let them in my home and their energy was lingering in my home as well. I've always had these experiences. Like I said, that's what initially led me to, you know, digging into my spirituality. I had um, experienced a lot of sleep paralysis, a lot of nightmares, couldn't really figure out what it was. I used to like literally get upset with my stepmother and anybody who tried to tell me that what I was doing was wrong. So that's the first sign that your spirit is trying to tell you that it's not right. Because when they start to talk about it, if it's something that you stand solid on and it's something that's good for you, you're not going to get aggravated when somebody tries to speak to it. And so like my stepmother used to be like a full blown witch, like for real, for real. Like she used to make potions. Um, she used to do all kinds of stuff. I have a family member who shared with me that she put a spell on somebody and um, was explaining to me how that stuff comes back to you and how you, you latch on to things that you don't really wanna latch on to. I had a moment and um, I just started going back into my mode where I would just be depressed. I could not pull myself up. I was always down about things and I couldn't figure out what it was, right? So I ended up going to a Mother's Day brunch and I ran into an amazing group of women and later on uh, would end up becoming my spiritual mothers and sisters. And um, they invited me to church and I hadn't been to church in almost two years. So I went to church that Saturday and the pastor was, um, our bishop was saying that you had to lay everything down, you know, let everything go for real and just see what God will reveal to you. And um, like I said, I, I believe in God. I have had my issues with my faith, but at this point in my life, I know who my God is. And um, I sat there and I just lifted my hands and I just completely surrendered. And I thought of all the things that I wanted to let go, but I also asked God to show me the things that I really, really needed to let go. And one of the things that was revealed to me were my cards, my tarot cards. I kind of struggled with it a little bit because, you know, in my mind, I justified what I was doing because I was trying to find a way to heal myself. And I felt like I liked my tarot cards because they gave me a way to freely express myself and my individuality and my gift that I have. I went back and forth with myself for a couple of days and then I literally one day I was gonna sell them on eBay, but then I was like, why would I wanna pass this on to somebody else? So I picked my cards up and I threw them in the trash. I'm feeling good, I'm feeling great. I'm getting back into my word. I'm starting to pray, still meditating because that's something that, you know, the word tells you to do as well. And I'm still having these bad dreams and I'm, I don't wanna scare y'all but i literally started seeing like figures in my home which i i've seen before and it used to scare the heck out of me because i couldn't understand what i was seeing but i would be in the middle of a nightmare and i would be like right in between my sleep and i would open my eyes and i could see figures literally standing outside my door so Last night, literally last night, <laughs> I was like, why can't I still sleep? Like, why am I still not having any peace? And I literally like looked over because my, um, my bookshelf is where on the top of it, where I had the Florida water, the sage and the candles. And my crystals are there too, and my singing bowl. I literally looked over there and was like, I started looking at my candles and God started talking to me. And he was like, 
you need to throw away the rest of that stuff. You need to get rid of, destroy that altar now. So I got up, it was the middle of the night. I got up out of my bed. I walked over to my altar and I had a moment again. I said, well, God, why are my candles? And God said, didn't you set a spell on these when you bought them? Now, new age, modern people would call it setting intentions. It's a spell. And I kept my Florida water because if anybody touches anything, then they're like transferring their energy as far as the candles go. So I kept my Florida water because I'm like, well, I might still need it in case somebody touches my candles and break the spell. So... I picked my candles up. Every last one of them had had the herbs in them, had the intention set. I picked my candles up. I picked my Florida water up. And I picked my sage up. And I walked over to the trash can and I threw it all away. I tied the bag up. I sat it outside my door. I didn't even want it in my house. It was like the feeling to get it out the house was that strong that I literally sat it outside my door. I had a pumpkin sitting on my um, countertop. I don't celebrate Halloween, never did. I always went to church when I was little for Halloween. So this is nothing new. Um, the pumpkin sitting on my countertop, I took the pumpkin, walked that outside to close the door and locked it. And I immediately just started praying over my door. And I was saying, Lord, if there's anything else in this home that does not represent you or is signifying anything of witchcraft or anything like that, let me get rid of it now. And so I walked back in my room and I could feel the difference. Like when I first burnt my sage for the first time and I could feel the energy literally leaving my home after i had thrown it all away i started feeling the same thing and um i walked over to my crystals and i put my hands on my crystals and i said do i need to throw these away too and i didn't get no feeling or no confirmation for that and then i put my hand on my singing bowl and i said oh, you know what about the singing bowl and the singing bowl all it is guys is it lines up your your chakras it balances your energy it you it's i'll make a video later but we operate off of vibrational frequencies and energy and all the crystals do is help balance your energy and all the singing bowl does is help balance your vibration so there's no witchcraft going on with that because you can't set a spell using a singing bowl you can't like put bad intentions on a crystal and give it to somebody and then you know now their life is going to be messed up because you said i want to curse this person with this crystal like it, you, you can't there's nothing that you can do to like use the object as if you are, are like controlling yourself or your life or setting a difference in your life with the crystals they don't it don't make a difference whether you have them or you don't so what I'm telling you is I always think it's important to definitely know who you are and where you come from, but get your own understanding of it. And when you really see the bigger picture of what's really going on, just look at your life. If you have turned away from God and you have gotten on this, um, I'm just totally spiritual and I don't need no help doing it. I'm going to do it myself you're gonna come to realize that you're still struggling because there are some things, and, and let me speak to myself, okay? I was still struggling because I had to realize that there are just some things I cannot fix. There are just some things I cannot heal myself from. There are just some things that I cannot handle. No matter how much I meditate, no matter how much I say my affirmations, no matter how much I exercise and take my vitamins, okay, there are only certain things that a supernatural power can do. And don't get me wrong, you can pray to whoever you want. 
But I choose to pray to God because God has shown me things that I've never seen before. God responds to me immediately when I pray. And I've said this before. I'll probably post a video that's on my Facebook, but I have a whole story. And I have more stories of how I have literally sat down and talked to God. And God has responded in many ways. Okay, came through abundantly. Am I still spiritual? Absolutely. I love everything about my heritage. I love everything about where I come from. I love everything about it, good and bad, because it's a part of who I am. You know what I'm saying? So um, I'm still spiritual. I'm still in tune with myself and I still meditate. I still say affirmations. I just put God before all of it. You know, and I just have an understanding that I'm not getting through all of this by myself. I can't fix myself. And the way that I have been protected and guided and blessed in my life, I would be a fool to sit there and say that I brought it upon myself. Because I would be lying if I said that. And the Sydney that you're seeing here right now is because I made a decision. You know, a lot of um, a lot of the time I was struggling with cognitive dissonance, and I couldn't really pick a side. I wanted to to be for God, but there were so many contradictions with it. And once you learn that there's there's stuff. There's bull with anything in life, everything in life, no matter what job you go to, what person you're married to, what type of friends you have, every single situation comes with some bull. Every single thing is not how it originally started. Somebody came along and retold it. Somebody came along and redid it. Somebody came along and said, no, it, it, it wasn't um, this, it was that. But does that mean abandon it just because somebody came and tampered with it like they do everything else? I go off of what I know and what I know is that when I, when I worship, when I call out to God, God answers me. I feel the Lord right now. And I'm talking to you today. I'm not trying to convince you of anything. But if you found yourself trying to get into your own way, I dare you to try it. I dare you to try it. Leave that stuff alone. Don't get yourself attached to things that you're not able to get rid of by yourself. You can burn all the sage in the world. You're still going to have nightmares. You're still going to have depression. You're still going to have anxiety. You're still not going to be able to reach the levels in life that you can only reach if you ask God to bring you there. God can only bring you to those levels. You can't bring yourself to those levels. And I'm just sharing with you my story. But I do want to thank everybody for watching today. And... If you do what you do, more power to you. If it empowers you, cool. Um, but just hear me out. Try God. And I promise you, it's going to make all the difference in the world. But I thank you for watching. Again, if you can like, comment, and subscribe. My channel has been growing expeditiously. And I want to thank each and every one of you that take the time out to watch my videos, to comment my videos, to like and subscribe to my channel. I'm so glad you're a part of the crew. And you take care of yourself. Love yourself. Respect yourself. No matter what. All right, y'all.